So guys, I am back and today guys I bring you a first descendant video and I've been playing it for about two hours now but I did have a lot of experience and hands-on with the beta and alpha quite a while back. Uh, but what I will say is playing the game right now it does feel a ton smoother. But there are definitely things I do recommend you changing within the option menus to make it even smoother for your playthrough. Today we get into it all. How's it going guys? My name is DPG and if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So how are you guys enjoying the game? I mean, it just feels great to me, but I liked it from way back. I mean, I must have played this for over a year ago now and I've been working on it ever since that moment. And it just feels way, way more smoother. There's way more things to do too, but yeah. Okay, so in my opinion, and I play on console by the way, these are console settings. I mean, PC probably will differ in regards to display correction and making the game run smoother. On console, it's just basically done for you. There's only a couple of graphics options here, which I will talk about anyway. So going into it guys, into your options menu. Now what I will say is you can do this. Well, the majority of this in game, you don't have to go to the main menu. I've only come to the main menu to speak about the graphics part of the options because you can't do that in game. But to get your, to your options in game, you have to hold your start button. Don't just press it, you have to press and hold it. That way you can get to your options menu. Okay, so the first thing we'll see here is graphics. Now, on console, I mean, I've left it on performance. It feels complete. I'll just turn motion. Why do games put this on as standard? I, I mean, why? Motion Blaze, hurried. It's only ever good on car games, and that's like, like, like few and far between people. But yeah, turn off Motion Blaze if that's on for you. Now, in regards to the other two options on performance, you can't even select them. Now, if you put it on fidelity, you can mess around with ray tracing. But at the end of the day, guys, this is something you need to try and test. In my opinion, performance is just perfect the way it is. I've had no stutters, nothing on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5. I doubt you're going to have any of this either. So yeah, forget about that. Just leave it on performance, in my opinion. Okay, so now onto gameplay. And to be honest here, guys, this is all personal preference. I mean, it depends on what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what you want to learn about individual enemies, this, that, and the other. Me personally, I think it's fine the way it is. But in regards to uh, displaying those damage options, you can see here, guys, there's quite a few individual things you can learn more about the enemy. It just showcases more in regards to, I don't know, showing their values, shield values, and this, that, and the other. But that's completely up to you if you want to go through these and change them. I think they'll find a way they are, to be honest, playing the game for a bit now. I mean, there's nothing you don't, I mean, what you don't get is the actual direct values. What you do get is the icons, uh, so forth. So for instance, let's say, so as you can see here, show status effect text. Uh, you can see there's display the icon and name of the status effect when it is applied. Disabling feature only shows the status effect icon. Now, once you get used to the icons and the status effect icons, you don't really need to uh, see the name on screen. It just shows up the screen in my opinion. And if anything, with more of these on, it's probably gonna add to the performance issues if there are any or if you're having any. So yeah, keep all these off guys. And again, grappling hook to me felt absolutely fine. You can slightly adjust if you want to, but in my opinion, leave these the way they are. Now onto audio, I changed one thing and I definitely turned mic off for now. I changed the uh, mic options, I turned this off. I mean, I know, yes, it's voice channels in party, but if you put this in squad and you forget that your mic's automatically on, if you join a random squad in game, you could be having a conversation with your missus in the background and everybody's hearing everything if your mic isn't switched off. So yeah, for now, just switch it off. Yeah, obviously, if you want to speak to people in a party or in a squad, turn it back on, simple as that. The speaker and all that shit, you can leave the way it is. That's completely fine. I actually turned my speaker volume down a bit, but hey, that's just me. And in regards to volume, I mean, this is just a few mobs. This is just depends on your headset. What you're hearing, what you ain't hearing changes at, at will. Now, in regards to display, again here, I mean, what I did was I turned up my field of view to 110. I think it's standard at 90, 110. I like it. Actually, you could go up more with this. You can put it on max if you want to. I've always liked my field of view a bit wider, a bit bigger. But yeah, that's just me. And we've got to sharpness. I'll put my sharpness up to four as well. Just have a little bit more detail on distant things. So yeah, fine. Now, in regards, in regards to the controller, I personally, I turn my controller vibration off. Absolutely does my nutting. What you may notice is because this is a third person game, over the shoulder uh, type of game. 
Uh, your sensitivity when turning left and right and up and down may feel a little slow for you. I adjusted mine to 70 and 35. Uh, and again, with my aiming, I think I just slightly, uh, adjusted these slightly. But yeah, it will make a massive difference uh, just adjusting these up a bit. Because when you're turning in-game, it does feel super, super slow. But yeah, that's just could be just down to gameplay style and what you may like. But when there's enemies all around you on the battlefield like there are in this game, Spinning on the spot feels, I mean, it takes a lifetime in my opinion anyway, but I'm used to having max sensitivity on games like Call of Duty, Destiny, Outriders even. But yeah, I think 70 is a perfect spot for me. Try it and let me know. And again, with the uh, Y-axis sensitivity as well, I put this on 35. These two I adjusted slightly. I think 55 may be standard here. I can't remember, but I adjusted this to 30. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, so coming down to aim assist. Now, yes, we play on console, we have aim assist, we need aim assist people, we don't have mouse and keyboard, but although we can plug it in, but yeah. So aim assist guys, you wanna keep on and using aim assist for that hip fire also you wanna keep on. Now I adjusted these slightly, um, the aim assist sensitivity level and auto tracking level. I put them both up to 90 because what I was realizing was at, at close range, it feels completely fine at standard. But when you slightly get to a bit of a distance, even with long distance weapons, that don't feel as sticky as much so it's a little bit harder to hit that target i mean 90 may be a little bit too high for you uh put on 85 maybe you can even go to 85 yes you can uh but yeah put, probably try 85 if this feels a little bit too sticky for you uh, but it is a pve game i mean putting these on max no one's gonna know or care but yeah just try these in my opinion it's much much better at a 90 value than it is at a standard so yeah try that guys and let me know your thoughts and that is it i mean the game feels much much better with these settings in my opinion uh but yeah tell me what you think use these and let me know guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more and the first descendant be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one